The introductions yesterday were for the starting quarterback uh, for LSU against South Carolina. And uh, Ed Ogeron telling us uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, late yesterday afternoon, that it will be T.J. Finley. I told our team, T.J. and Max, we'll give them a shot. Both of them, we believe in them. I think both of them are going to be NFL quarterbacks. Uh, the team loved both of those guys. Uh, it was a very close battle. But at the end, uh, we felt that T.J. nudged Max just a little. I wish I could start two. But uh, T.J. is going to be the starter there. We're going to give him time to get his work done. I told Max I want to play him. But, you know, it all depends on the flow of the game. And, of course, uh, the the nudging uh, was the reason. But why uh, Finley over Max Johnson? Yeah, it, it could have been the flip of a coin, honestly. That, that's how close it was. And uh, T.J. may have had one or two better plays in third down than, than Max did. That's all that was. And uh, I just want to give them both a chance. And, uh, but it all depends on the flow of the game. Should you might get in the game and, and T.J. gets hot, I'm not going to take him out. And, and, I'm, and I'm not, we're not going to be impatient with him neither. But I, I do want to play both. I want to see what both of them can do. So that answers one of our questions from earlier in the week, Jacob, which was if you're going to commit to playing two quarterbacks, what do you do if the, the one goes out there and plays really well? You don't yeah. want to take him out. And so he hedged on that, which he should. You don't want to – listen, I'm going to do – I think – paraphrasing it's I'm going to do everything I can to get two quarterbacks in the game but if this guy goes out and lights it up I'm not going to take him out he's not on a six inning pitch count you know it's like once he gets to 75 he's throwing shutout ball he's going to yeah. stay in in the game so where does that uh, you know leave the, the second quarterback honestly if LSU if LSU only plays one quarterback tomorrow they'll probably win if if they, if that guy's playing so well, he, oh, he, they'll probably win. It doesn't mean they can't win if they play two, but if they play one, it means he probably played well enough for LSU to win the game. And I think T.J. Finley, since he is the guy, he went out and he earned that because we believe, in fact, we know because Max Johnson was warming up in mm -hmm. the Missouri game that he led going into that game. And so now when you have a quarterback competition within practice within the last couple of eight days, T.J. Finley went and won that job. He had to overcome – already having Max in your mind as the starter. So credit to him. You heard a couple of plays in third down might have been the difference. That also tells me LSU is going to run their offense. They're not going to necessarily change it to try to, you know, maybe ease in a freshman quarterback because you're going off third down. Well, that means you're pushing the ball down the field. That means you want to still put it in the air. Now, we're all calling for a little bit of balance, but that tells you they're going to run – LSU's offense, and remember, that's what Will Muschamp said. He said LSU's going to run their offense. Why wouldn't they? They've been explosive over the last year and a half. I expect them to run their offense. So that kind of, to me, signals that's what they'll do. It's their offense. It's just it's play calling. It's not schematics. I mean, they can't go in and overhaul everything in a week. They can't overhaul everything, but as you've seen, when, look, go back to when Steve was the interim OC that yeah. week against Mizzou where they, at the time, put up the most yards ever in LSU history. There was enough change within that week that there was a big difference. And they've had a couple of extra days as well. A lot of stuff in there that they had just, we, we knew it was Put in there. Put in the basement and locked never, away. No, how much stuff, <laughs> boy, I hate to bring this memory up. How much stuff did y'all run in practice that never saw the light of day yeah. in a game? Uh, a couple of things. In yeah. Including <laughs> including the fake field goal where Colt David threw it over his head to Flynn. We ran that for two and a half years before we actually called it. Okay, uh, because go, our running joke on the post game and, and on Tiger Zone was about the Wildcat. For years and Gordy would go out to practice and watch him run the Wildcat. They're gonna run the Wildcat, they run it. I'll believe it when I see it in the game, yep. and they never did. So, there were things that were in the offense back then that Steve could call that they just would never call before. So, I think it, it does affect play calling for sure in this, but they they have to run what, what they've been running because they can't they can't change everything, nor, nor do they want to. That's what these guys have been schooled in. How rare is it? Because my from the outside, my impression is that it's fairly uncommon for you to get into season, into the middle of the season, and for there to be a depth chart change that doesn't involve an injury. In other words, if you win a job in camp, yeah. okay, that depth chart is pretty much set. And then you adjust it as people get hurt. Sometimes you have to move people around and things like that. But two completely healthy guys playing the same position – and one of them had the edge going into the season, and the other guy overtook him. That's much more uncommon. I would yeah, think. it is. It is. It, it without question is because 
typically you don't have a scrimmage and you don't have enough you know live bullets in practice to be able to make that decision mm-hmm. because once you get in season as you know it's all about the opponent and you have scout teams and you don't really do good on good for the most part but having a couple of extra days and because LSU's been struggling with the physicality on the defensive side of the football they might have done some of those things they might have ramped it up and said you know what if we get beat it ain't going to be because we weren't physical again because that was embarrassing last time out okay so maybe they did some of those things, to your point, because you're right. Typically, if you win the job out of camp, you don't lose that job unless you've been really bad, right? So we've heard Max Johnson, TJ Finley kind of on the same level. It was only a couple of plays that elevated TJ Finley. So to your point, I think they probably did ramp it up. Those extra days were crucial, crucial for this quarterback competition, and hopefully we'll see for the defensive improvements. Those are going to talk about uh, TJ Finley's improvements since uh, the beginning. Well, you know, he lost some weight. Uh, he must have lost, about, I guess, about 20 pounds, maybe more. Uh, he's got great shape. TJ is a hard worker. He's very cerebral. He's always studying football. Uh, he's always had a cannon for an arm. It was more or less putting a little touch and more or less reading the defense and the accuracies. I think he's uh, come a long way. Now, live bullets are going to be flying Saturday. They're going to come after him. Let's find out. But I do believe he'll do well. Oh, Will's coming after him. Sure. Wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I, I don't. I don't need to know anything about the quarterback on the other side. Other, th- you just put that F R on the side of his name. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing it. I'm bring. I'm gonna make that guy beat me. I don't care how highly recruited he was. I don't care how big he is or small he is. How fast he is. Right handed, left handed, strong arm, weak. Fastball, knuckleball. Cr- I'm coming after. He, I see F R on the side. I'm coming. Until and, you until you prove to me you can beat me. And especially one who's not going to have the mobility to take off and run. Because right. sometimes if you bring, say you bring zero blitz and it gets picked up, well, there's going to be a lane. And then once you get past that lane, because everybody's either blitzing or the rest are in coverage, there's a big gap and you can run your quarterback. But if your quarterback's going to be more of a thrower, which TJ is, then yeah, you're going to see that. And the strength that South Carolina has on defense is what? The corners. Yeah, the two corners. Right? So mm-hmm. what can you do when you have two really good corners that can lock up the receiver? You can bring more people. And you have to you have to go out and prove you can beat that. You can you can get them out of it in a hurry. You, you go you go oh, burn absolutely. them you go burn them one or two times and all of a sudden they get real cautious, but you have to be able to make those plays too. Uh and Ogeron talked about protecting T J Finley. Well, you know, the offensive line's got the block for them. Everybody's gotta pick up their game. But you know, we get some rushing practice. Oh, there's going to be some times I'm sure he's going to get sacked. I'm sure he's going to get hit. I think he's prepared. He's a, he's a big kid. He's 6'6". Uh, he steps up in the pocket well. He can run, but ran a couple, but ran, ran him today a little bit. Ran around the edge. Did very well. I think he's doing fine. You know, we understand he's not, you know, Michael Vick or Steve Young running the football. But I mean, he's not. He doesn't have concrete in his feet either. Right. I mean, he can he can move around uh, a little bit. When they talk about protecting him uh, with that offensive line. Uh, we're hearing mumblings uh, that there may be some changes up there that uh, we may see. Cam Wire, uh, that's something that Mike Dettelier alluded right. to yesterday on Matt's show. So this, but they have a choice now, right? They, they've they seen Rosenthal start two games. They've seen Wire start one game. So they, they have an, an idea. You're going to get Ed Ingram back. That's that's going to help you. So the two things on the offensive line, you're gonna you're gonna return completely to health, and in at least one spot, you're gonna have a choice. That helps. Ingram is the the big story there because, and this isn't against Charles Turner. He's not a guard. He's not ready to play guard. He is undersized. He's really undersized at center. Now you can be undersized at center and still have success. I think one of the best centers in LSU history was Brett Helms, and Brett Helms was same situation, 285 pounds, but he was a mauler, right? At guard, you got to have some girth to you. And Ed Ingram is so strong and so physical. That stat that we kept giving out against Missouri, when you don't even have a full yard before contact, that's where Ed Ingram can help you. 